Welcome, everybody, to Radicalized Truth Survives, episode 78. We are an investigative show about disinformation, and we have our friend Nadine Smith, the executive director of Equality Florida. She is on the front lines fighting the fascists in Florida. And OMG, are we going to talk about the unfolding Moms for Liberty scandal, which could actually be the thing that brings uh, Ron DeSantis to his knees down for good. And that is something that we will be going into great detail with Nadine Smith um, over. How about uh, you guys? What do you have to say? Uh, I'm just still stuck on the phrasing on his knees. Is all. <laughs> High five. <laughs> it's a little bit salacious, but uh, something's got to bring down the fascists. Well, I got to tell you, the cruel and utter hypocrisy and the cruel cynicism of the Moms for Liberty operation and it being exposed for the uh, cruel hypocrisy that it always was is uh, these are organizations that hurt real people and uh, have been harming children under the under the guise of, quote unquote, protecting them. And um, I think that what is happening in Florida will ultimately uh, result in um, more and more people having the courage to stand up to these extremists. And I also think that nothing good is going to come of it for Ron DeSantis. And that is a very, very important uh, point of our interview with Nadine. So shall we jump into Front Loaded Gentlemen? Front Loaded. I just want to quickly bring everyone's attention to an interview that Moby, the art, the music artist, did with Hunter Biden. It just dropped over the weekend. It was part one of two. Apparently, they are uh, close friends, both in recovery. This interview, uh, I think, is really incredibly important in not only humanizing Hunter Biden, who obviously has been um, used and targeted much in the same way that Hillary was, the same techniques. Uh, the son is being targeted to harm the father. It is very clearly, um, uh, very clear to me when I listen to Hunter in his own words, talking about what's happened to him, that this is part of the Russian war machine that has been going after him to try to destroy his father. Uh, he also mentions Roger Stone. When we talk about cruel cynicism, uh, you have Hunter Biden, who is a man in recovery, uh, trying to find his way uh, in life. And the uh, ongoing attacks on him have uh, dehumanized him much in the same way that Hillary was dehumanized in 2016. And I encourage everybody who thinks they may know something about Hunter Biden to please listen to this interview on the Moby Pod. Um, simply because you might actually find out that there's a human behind the uh, memes and the ongoing attacks to discredit his father. Do you guys have any comments on that? Uh, I just want to um, uh, sarcastically thank the Department of Justice uh, for helping uh, this operation to take down uh, Joe Biden through his son by appointing exactly as many special counsels to hunter biden as they did to the entire january 6th investigation so that they could re-dig up uh things uh old tax bills that he paid yeah he doesn't owe anything yeah. on these taxes he he was in you know on drugs at the time as he readily admits of course and our feckless fucking attorney general hires a Trump guy to investigate Hunter Biden, to come up with every single possible charge they could, and then prosecute it to the maximum possible extent. Every single legal analyst who has looked at this has said, this is unique. The, the gun charges were unique uh the the tax charges were unique no one gets charged for taxes that they've yeah. already paid for yeah 
it's insane and it, it it is a it is a frankly um you know i think uh an indication that that our our justice department is seriously off yeah i couldn't agree more high fi i will be the first person to admit that hunter biden was a fuck up he fucked himself up he fucked his life up he fucked everything up but you know what like the prodigal son who realizes the error of his ways he cleaned himself up he's coming back yeah he he paid his dues right and and the way in which he's being treated is is not christian you know in in the parable of the prodigal son he, he was welcome back right he was like yeah you messed up but we still love you what the American government is doing to the man is castigating him. They are intentionally attacking the man to yeah. hurt his father. Yeah. It's so obvious. And yet we sit here like, oh, yeah, this is normal. No, it's not. And that's why I wanted people to understand there's a human being behind these memes. There's a human being behind these attacks by people like Marjorie Taylor Greene. Uh, you guys know that I'm in recovery. He is open about his recovery. I meet many people in the program who suffer when they lose a, a brother or a sister or a mother or, you know, uh, any family members. He suffered through all of that. And yes, he wrote about his uh his addiction and he's making amends but to for america just to allow the russian war machine to continue using him as a wedge to destroy his dad because they don't want democracy in america and they're putting their thumb on the scale for trump again is as jim was saying an absolute dereliction of duty and our justice department uh is playing a role in that and again just take a moment to listen to who this person is and perhaps share it with uh, any family members who are continually on Hunter Biden watch. So thanks, guys. I, I think the most chilling line of his interview with Moby is Hunter actually said, they want me to kill myself. No, they do. To hurt my father. And that's true. I they mean, we, we have seen time and time again how this Zersetzung machine, yeah. how these manipulative online operators want people to kill themselves. That's what they want. And that's what the Department of Justice is doing too. And, and do you know why he hasn't? Because he's working a good fucking program and he wakes up every day in gratitude and he actually tries to realize that the people hurting him are also hurt people. So thanks guys for your support always of uh, the stories that I think are important. Shall we move on to number two? All right, so we have uh, Ruth ben Giot on exposing the hypocrisy of the faux populace. So she uh, came on to Byline Supplements news meeting and told a global audience how we can defend democracy. And she had a lot of really great ideas. I hope everybody takes uh, the time to read through it, support Byline, a small team of investigative reporters. One of the key things, stop glamorizing autocrats. We're going to partake in some of that today with our interview with Nadine Smith. Um, that's just something that uh, is very important that the media still gets wrong. As Jim knows, she referred to January 6th as a cult leader rescue mission. That is a great phrase. I'm hoping to burnish it in people's brains. Um, and also the fact that the media does not do enough to remind people of the violence that occurred not so long ago. Uh, we often talk about how people have memory hold the coup. That has to stop. And she has just a million incredible things to say about what uh, we could be doing better. And of course, one of them being regulating big tech. So um, last thing expose the hypocrisy of faux populace. Jim listens to their shit all day when he is speedlunking in the telegrams and in all the places where they're talking about the globalists. Uh, the irony cannot be lost on you, Jim, that the people who are the, the, the biggest of the globalists are raging against the quote unquote globalists. So 
Yeah, I mean, glo globalist is just a, a euphemism for Jews. That's all. That's that. Sorry, that's all it means. It's a, it's a it is a conflation of Jews and liberals and communists, which is exactly the same uh, scapegoats as Hitler. It's not. A, it's not. It's not a coincidence. You know, they 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 have to come up with euphemisms for it because until recently it was still, you know, passe to to be openly anti-Semitic against Jews. So you would use globalist or Soros or the World Economic Forum or some other, you know, sort of large global conspiracy idea. Uh, and then you'd attach a bunch of, of specific Jewish people to it to make clear, you know, uh, what it was. Um, but now, you know, now all those bets are completely off. Like now they, they just go ahead and say it. And this conflict in the Middle East has, has made that yeah. fashionable. Yes, correct. Well, okay. Thank you. And last but not least, uh, guys, we talked a little bit about this on uh, Rad Pod and Chill, but I want to make sure I draw everyone's attention to an interview I did with Dr. Stephen Hassan. It's very freaking important, uh, just as the extremists in America, you know, go on their quote unquote reawaken tours all the time. We need this guy out in the field going from town to town to tell people what he knows uh, about radicalization and how to bring people back from the brink. He's been doing this work for 47 years. Uh, Ex-cult members are the antibodies, as he would say, to helping people in this moment. He calls this, uh, we are in another psychohistoric moment and we need some sort of psychoeducation. Um, and, you know, he also ties everything in ultimately to something that I believe in very much and that so much of what is going on is cover for environmental um, issues, environmental corruption. And uh, what better way to get people to not care about the pending doom of our planet than to brainwash them en masse. Anyway, we've talked about this before. Dr. Stephen Hassan, like Ruth ben Giat, national treasures. I'm trying to expose our viewers as much as possible to some of the work of the true American heroes so they know where to go in times of despair. And I would put Dr. Stephen Hassan of course, Ruth on that list. Yeah, I I, I happen to know Stephen, and and uh, you know he's one of the first people I contacted, you know, three years ago, um, because I I saw this for as the psychological, you know, apocalypse that it that it is, and he's got the most experience of anyone in the world, literally, uh, on on helping people get themselves out of cults and uh, very important to me at least we don't use words like deprogram or, or even de-radicalize we're not de anything -ing. we're uh, allowing it's only about allowing people to figure it out for themselves that's the only way this works and you can help them figure it out for themselves um but but Stephen, you know, has has been the only reason why I have not given up hope is uh, 45 years ago, as he tells the story, he was uh, starving himself to death for Nixon <laughs> because because the Reverend Sung Young Moon told him that Nixon was Jesus or something. So, and, you know, and now he looks at it like, what the fuck? Right. right. And and that that experience, the, the ability to transition from one alternate reality back to the real world. Yes. Is a very, very important thing for people to know. And, um, you know, I'm glad he's I, he needs more exposure than he's currently getting. So that's right. Doing your part. Thank you so much. Yes, anybody can read that article at Betty Dangerous, but Hillary, if you're listening, you were on Christian Amanpour on October 6th on CNN saying that we need a formal deprogramming program for MAGA cult extremists. We know the guy who could lead that program. 
give Dr. Stephen Hassan a call. He's I wish the she guy. That, she, she used the wrong words, uh, honestly. Mm -hmm. Just like saying deplorable was probably yes. the wrong word, honestly. Like, uh, do you, you don't need to deprogram them. What you need to do is educate people about how this works. Psychoeducation for people, and you need to go after the the propaganda, the content, and the psychological war machine. Yes, that has, that was built, by the way, for Hillary. Right, they, not for her, for her to use against her in 2016. The same fucking psychological war machine that went after her in 2016. The, the the trick is not to try and individually fix all the people who've been hurt by it. I'm going to say this one last time. The best way to help someone who's brainwashed is to stop brainwashing them. Yeah, right. Really, it's that. It's like a lot of this problem goes away if we can figure out how to uh, prevent uh, the weaponization, the mass weaponization of social media. Thank you. And let's start by declaring it a national health emergency. This is a public health emergency. So thank you so much, Jim. Hi-Fi, anything else before we move on to why it matters? Everything I have to say about the psychological war machine that's being pointed at Americans, we're going to discuss in why it matters. Why does it matter? First story this week, we're going to talk about Russia, 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 part one. Why? Because the Good Law Project has revealed that Tories are still, still receiving funds from Russian-linked donors. That's right. Since 2022, after the main thrust of Putin's war against Ukraine, we know it started in 2014 when they invaded Crimea and convince the world that that didn't happen. But then they started the real war, the military operation, right? The one in which they are committing war crimes, in which Russia is torturing prisoners of war, in which Russia is raping Ukrainian women, in which Russia is stealing children from Ukraine. Doesn't matter to the Tories because they've gotten at least $300,000 from Russian sources. Why does that matter? Because Russia, Russia, Russia. It's the fucking Russians. Hello. Yeah. It's been the yeah. Russians. It's been the Russians for a very long time. What's happening yeah. is the goddamn Russians come over here and they find people who are mad about stuff and then they give them lots of money and they fill them with fucking fascist ideas and then those people spread it to other people. It's been going on for a long fucking time and especially since 2016. I'm goddamn tired of it. Yeah, so I'm trying to find a Paul Mason tweet because, as you guys know, it was exposed that Russia hacked and attacked journalists in uh, cyber espionage, and our friend Paul Mason was actually part of that. Um, and I am hoping that, again, as we talk about these stories, that this is not something that just uh, disappears into the ether but uh you know at some point my, my favorite part about his tweet was is all the replies uh from all the literal fucking botniks and yes. russian and russian agents that yes. were like ooh blue and you you know like wow yes. wow yeah yeah <laughs> there's yeah. literally dozens of these these obvious fucking russian assets is right right like, you crazy blue and you know yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. 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 Uh, come on, man. Come on, man. Uh, How is it not obvious? How is it not obvious? So let's make it a little more obvious because the next story we're going to talk about this week is Russia, 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 part two. Mm. Because this has to do Russia was using a huge number of immigrants from the Middle East and Africa, and they were pushing them over the border towards Finland. And Finland said, eh, that's not happening. And they closed their border. So now what is Russia doing? Russia is taking people from Somalia, 
Sudan, immigrants, people who are simply trying to find a better life somewhere else in the world, and they're conscripting them into their troops and sending them to die in Ukraine. That's right. They're stealing migrants, and they are turning them into soldiers to be murdered and murder in Ukraine. I don't understand how people can't understand the operations that Russia is running when it comes to using migrants to freak out populations, and B, now they're turning them into forced soldiers to die. How are they not a terrorist state? And that's why it matters. Well, he, I mean, Putin also recently let out cannibals. Yeah. Literal cannibals. Yeah. Who, who murdered many, many people and ate them, <laughs> let them out of prison to go fight in Ukraine. So, you know, basically his whole thing has been like, you know, all these people in the gulags over here. Okay, I'll tell you what. You go over there in Ukraine and, you know, die over there and I'll let you out. And he's been doing it. He's emptying his own prisons of mass murderers and rapists and everything else uh, because he needs cannon fodder. And now it's, he's it's, stealing migrants to get more cannon fodder. It's mm. fucking disgusting. As you guys know, four occupied regions of Ukraine are being forced to participate in Russia's presidential election. Uh, and I believe that is why Ukraine needs to crush Russia back into the dark ages uh, where they'll feel right at home. Well, that's funny you bring that up because that goes to our third story this week. Russia, 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 part three. Because it turns out that Republicans are meeting with Viktor Orban. That's right, Putin's inside man in the EU. That corrupt Hungarian Viktor Orban will be meeting with Republicans to make sure that Ukraine doesn't get any more aid. Because who is standing in Putin's way of becoming a global dictator right now? Zelensky and Ukraine. Ukrainian people are dying to protect democracy, to protect Europe, to protect the globe. And we have a fifth column of traitors inside our own government who are meeting with a Russian proxy Mm -hmm. to make sure that war goes badly. And that's why it matters. Who is one of those? Who is one of those Russian proxies? The motherfucker, two heartbeats from the presidency. Uh, who is in there not to follow the Constitution, but to shred it? Yeah. Remember, he is a Seven Mountains Dominionist, Mike Johnson, and a, a new apostolic reformation uh, follower, which means he follows a mandate. And the mandate says that God that Christians need to take over America in order for the end times to come. So he's literally there to wipe democracy off the planet so that he can reenact his his conspiracy theory about how Jesus Christ is going to come back to earth and, and rescue him uh, from his closet. I mean, what the fuck is going on over here? From all the bones rattling around and the closet. Oh, the bones rattling. Actually, actually. Bones be rattling. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim, for bringing up religious fascists. Because one thing I forgot with that article is that the meeting between Republicans and this Putin proxy, Viktor Orban, is being arranged by the Heritage Foundation. And the Heritage Foundation is very, very important because the Heritage Foundation is a large donor to Moms for Liberty, which we will be discussing with Nadine here shortly. But the Heritage Foundation also gets their money from a a foundation called Donors Trust. And who Mm -hmm. gave Donors Trust $20 million in 2020? Mm -hmm. Why, that would be Robert Mercer. Yeah. And you know who else? gave the heritage foundation a bunch of money oh hi thanks for checking in i'm still a piece of garbage (laughs) well that's right 
they are they are basically the same. Yeah. When you when you look at Mercer and Peter Thiel, where Peter Thiel has gotten a lot of his funding over the years, is from Robert Mercer. And Robert Mercer, uh, by the way, is famously a massive launderer for Vladimir Putin. Mm. Tens of billions of dollars. Shocking. Money Shocking. Gets shuffled around in, in the Mercer gum, the Mercer, Mercerverse. Um, for example, Breitbart in my car, mm. you know, Parlor. Is there any of this sound familiar? You know, the, Epoch like, Times, mm. uh, uh, Cambridge Analytica. <laughs> Look, it, we're, it's the same fucking group of, of people doing the same goddamn thing they've been doing for decades. And either we're going to do something about it or we're going to investigate Hunter Biden's taxes. One of those so, things is going gonna, is gonna to happen. Uh, and, and, you know, you can guess uh, what that is going to help. Thank you both for reminding me of a point that Dr. Hassan made that I think is very important and that our viewers should be thinking about. Um, when I asked him, why is our government not doing anything to uh, alert people about these cult dynamics that are occurring? He said, well, we've been infiltrated. He happened to mention the Mormon church. The point of this was, though, he was saying, let's say you're an FBI agent and you uh, you know, believe in the words of your leader, your prophet, are you serving the constitution or are you serving that, you know, God that you, that you, it, it, it's gotta be the constitution if you have pled that oath, but somebody like Mike Johnson, who is he serving? Is he serving his God or is he serving the constitution? And everything he says, it makes it pretty clear that he is not fit for purpose because he is not serving the Constitution. And I think that yeah. needs to be a wedge issue on how we wedge these uh, theocratic fascists out of our government. Well, somebody, you know, in his initial interview, someone, you know, he said, well, you, you might not know that much about me, but I'm simple. If you need to know what my policies are, look in the Bible. Um, I just have to remind people one more time. There's a thing called the Bill of Rights. And it's not like a an extra part of the Constitution. <laughs> it's, the, it's the center of the Constitution. And the first 10 words, the first 10 words, Congress shall make no law respecting establishment of religion. That, that means that Mike Johnson is saying something that is literally against the very, very first principle of the Constitution, which is freedom from religion. Yes, the next thing after the first 10 words are, yeah, you get to be whatever religion you want. And I'm, I'm all for it. Knock yourself out. Believe whatever you want. But the first part... This is the part that all of these people want you to forget. They want you to forget that the Constitution, the American project, was based on removing ourselves from a theocracy, from a fascist theocracy, from a colonial in, uh, empire that was trying to dominate us with uh, Christianity. And we said, you know what? We're Christians, but fuck that. This is all against the very, very fabric of the United States. And, you know, at some point, we're going to have to uh, decide. We're going to have to decide. There has to be a reckoning. Jim Stewartson's Hellscape. Oh, fuck. As you may know, Elon Musk reinstated... Sandy Hook denier Alex Jones on his platform. Uh, that would be bad enough. But Elon Musk had a um, meeting 
on Twitter spaces or jitter, if you will, that involved some of the worst uh, and most damaging propagandists um, in internet history, uh, to include Mike Flynn, uh, who is, as many of you know, suing me and others uh, for $50 million, partly uh, because I said he was Q um, and that he's a traitor and that he is trying to destroy American democracy. Um, in the room was also Jack Posobiec, who is a neo-Nazi that interrogated prisoners in Gitmo uh, while he worked for Mike Flynn, then ran PSYOPs on Hillary Clinton in 2016 with people like Joe Biggs and Mike Flynn Jr. and Mike Cernovich and on and on based on Kremlin hacked emails. The openness and brazenness of this operation um, and the complete lack of acknowledgement by anyone in either the media or the government uh, is now at a place, um, you know, that uh, is more extreme than it's ever been. And I suppose it's not unusual uh, that things keep getting more extreme, because as we know, doesn't it, doesn't seem to get less extreme now, does it? But this is different. This is an open declaration of war. Um, it's really nothing short of that. It was Vivek Ramaswamy, who, um, as some of you may know, was on the Republican d debate stage, uh, quite literally validating great replacement theory, which, you know, has been in just about every white supremacist um, mass murderers manifesto for the last decade. Um, and Alex Jones and Mike Flynn and Elon Musk and Jack Posobiec and on and on. Oh, I forgot. Andrew Tate. Now, this is especially galling. Mike Flynn is currently uh, literally mobilizing people into Pizzagate propaganda in swing states. And Flynn not only went on a space that had hosted Andrew Tate just before Mike Flynn came on, but Flynn called him out over and over again as somebody who should come to debate the globalists and validated him as a as a a great guy standing up for western civilization andrew tate is a accused human trafficker and rapist and criminal gang leader who has been grifting and brainwashing uh, incels for years now in order to enrich himself and make the world a far worse place. And these guys are just hanging out together. with the richest man in the world on his platform that he bought for $44 billion, including from Saudi money. 
Putin <laughs> was in Saudi and the UAE last week. Um, you know, we've talked about a lot before. Russia, Russia, Russia. I was thinking today about no collusion. <laughs> Think about this. The entire Republican Party basically appears to be in bed with Vladimir Putin. You've got the richest man in the world, the most, arguably, the most important social media network on the planet, all blatantly in service of a foreign enemy nation state led by a war criminal. So I'm going to, you know, ask again that my friends out there um, pay attention. When Mike Flynn and others have been threatening the 2024 elections, whether they will actually happen, when they are threatening a black swan and things like that, uh, you've got to wonder, what are they gearing up for a year before the election? What's going on there? And does the government, the Justice Department, the FBI, anyone have a fucking clue. Arrest Mike Flynn. It is our great honor and pleasure to bring back Nadine Smith, the executive director of Equality Florida. She is going to be discussing with us the unfolding Moms for Liberty scandal and how that could actually doom Ron DeSantis. Let's bring Nadine in. Nadine Smith, we are so grateful to have you back with us. It's been a minute. It's actually been too long. So much has been happening in Florida. Of course, you are on the front lines of this fight against fascism. You have uh, an authoritarian governor, and we're going to be talking about him. Um, but let's jump right in. There has been a unfolding scandal in Florida with Moms for Liberty. And for those of us who do this type of work and profile these types of folks, none of it is shocking to us, but it must be uh, relatively shocking to people who aren't paying attention closely. Can you fill us in on some of the details? You're absolutely right. Whenever you find these people who have sort of dedicated their lives to attacking the LGBTQ community or, you know, um, putting themselves forward as these avatars of, of uh, extremist ideologies. Uh, it's never a surprise when they and their skeletons come tumbling out of the closet. And we see it time and time again. You can almost set your watch by it. Uh, this time it is uh, Bridget Ziegler and Christian Ziegler who are caught up in a salacious sex scandal uh, and, and possible criminal charges for him. And you know, our, our position from the beginning is that the, the justice system is going to deal with the criminality, uh, it, you know, th those charges. We're not, that's not our role. But we don't need a court to tell us the harm that they have inflicted. And I think one of the things that has been unmasked in this is the completely fraudulent nature of Moms for Liberty. To be crystal clear, this is not a group that rose organically out of concerns for moms, you know, in what was happening in schools. Everyone should understand that this was cooked up by Christian Ziegler, the head of the Florida Republican Party, who has said for years, we are losing white suburban moms who are empathetic around police violence, who are inclusive around LGBTQ issues, and they were looking for a strategy that could turn those moms into weapons they needed to dismantle public education and divert money into the very lucrative, um, you know, voucher programs and, and charter school, private school programs that they run. And I say all that to say, if you go through the timeline, you see them alternately taking credit for launching Moms for Liberty and then trying to hide their hands when it becomes too obvious that this was a 
a cooked up political strategy by Christian Ziegler and Bridget Ziegler uh, to mobilize, to, to lure uh, suburban white moms into the MAGA GOP universe. And so right. as this scandal unfolds, you know, the hypocrisy uh, behind it, it's it's not a bug, it's a feature. I mean, all every single time it, it takes these kind of fraudulent people, these kind of these, they, you know, they were liars and frauds from the very beginning. And they have used this uh, not just to dismantle K through 12, but to go after the university systems as well and understand that these are best friends of Ron DeSantis. Yes. I mean, personal best friends, uh, Bridget Ziegler uh, is not only on the uh, Sarasota school board and somebody who DeSantis championed in his push to, to get these extremists on school boards, but she is his appointee to the, uh, the Disney board that he created to go after uh, Disney for standing up to him on behalf of their employees. So they are wrapped around the DeSantis yes. uh, ecosystem and they have been a tool of that ecosystem and now it's blowing up in their face. Yes, so what you just described is incredibly cynical. This is a very cynical scheme. And I think people often don't understand when these aberrations come up, when this weird shit comes up, that there's actually a real uh, strategy behind it. But let's zero in on their relationship with Ron DeSantis. Let's really get granular on that, because I think that this is something that could actually uh, expose him for who he truly is and quite possibly take him down. I think it's that explosive. Well, you know, I think it's important that w people understand that what he has done, for example, with the universities, he has taken qualified university presidents remove them, just unceremoniously remove them, stack their their uh, boards with right-wing extremists who want to bring in Vermilion and Hillsdale College and these these uh, sort of Christo-fascist uh, curriculum. Uh, but Florida is in the middle of a brain drain, just to be clear. The best and the brightest students aren't coming here. The ones who are here are looking to go elsewhere. Other uh, states are actually, you know, providing incentives for students who are you know, who are going, this isn't the school that I signed up for two years ago. It's been taken over by these extremists. And then he installs his his political, you know, cronies into these, you know, university presidencies and triples the pay. I mean, this is corruption in broad daylight. And I think that one of the things that is happening and the reason you see uh, not just Democrats calling for the resignation of of uh, Bridget Ziegler and also uh, of her husband, Christian, you see Republicans because they know the longer this story rots in the in the sunlight, uh, the stench is going to reach all of them. And so I think, you know, there are there are a number of this isn't the first time DeSantis has been tied to people at the center of of, uh, you know, a, a, a sex scandal, including criminal criminality. Uh, one of his biggest backers in Jacksonville committed suicide in, in, a, in a parking lot uh, in the midst of, uh, you know, facing sex charges, uh, I think, against minors. Of course, Matt Gates and Joel Greenberg, uh, who have been, um, you know, in the in the hot seat legally around um, their interactions with uh, possibly underage girls. And, and to be clear, this is Matt Gates used to be a, a House member in Florida. And if you Google him, uh, you will find lots of things like they had a game called, uh, I think it was called Harry Potter, a uh, Harry Potter sex game where you got points for sleeping with uh, lobbyists, sleeping with uh, legislative aides. More points if the young, I think the younger they were, more points if you slept with them in their uh, apartments, if they were married, you know, I mean, it was appalling and talk, discussed very, very openly. So again, it is never a surprise when these people who put themselves forward as these uh, conservative um, values-driven people end up being frauds and liars and hypocrites to the very marrow of their bones.
the hypocrisy is disgusting i know the guys want to jump in i just want to say as the mother of a gay child obviously uh this is something that has had quite an impact on the family and the you know uh people that your organization represents it feels very evil to me it feels cruel it feels evil and i am looking forward to more uh reveals because again um you know real people are being harmed by these fake people yeah i encourage people if you uh if you google monarch high school in florida what you'll discover is as a res direct result of these laws that that desantis has championed and attempted to push out to the rest of the nation a very popular young girl senior class president on a sports team was outed as trans she is no longer in school. Her family has been besieged. The entire school has been turned upside down. Uh, 200 students over two days walked out in protest and in solidarity with her. And that story to me is really epitomizes what we're up against. An absolute disregard for the well-being of young people, an absolute disrespect for that family, but also embedded in it is the resistance coming from the students themselves, more and more parents uh, who never thought they would have to be going to school board meetings to stand up to these extremists, most of whom don't have kids in the public schools. You know, they, they're homeschoolers or they got their kids in, uh, you know, extremely, you know, right wing um, schools being paid for by vouchers. And so it's taken a, a minute. It's, there's been a little bit of a lag, but we launched something called Parenting with Pride because suddenly we were dealing with hundreds of phone calls, text messages, emails from families going, what the hell happened at my school? Why are, are why are there empty shelves in my in my uh, you know kids' classroom? Why is their favorite teacher, you know, been fired or leaving? I think there's a there's a massive uh, teacher shortage in part because good teachers who could not stomach going to school and turning their back on kids who need them. I said, you know, I, I can't do this. I'm gonna go elsewhere. And there's an exodus of a really heartbreaking exodus of good people from from our state. Uh, but those of us who are here, you know, I've got nothing but respect for people who made the decision, looked at the facts, and said it's not a safe place. We issued a travel advisory because of that overwhelm. We 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 couldn't we could no longer answer people individually, nor could we answer for anybody. I mean, Dwayne Wade in leaving Florida said he didn't feel like it was a safe place for his kids. You know, yeah. that's a two celebrity household with a pretty good income. And still he said, it's not safe. Right. So I say that simply to say those of us, those of us who have left, I have nothing but respect for the very hard decision to uproot your life, but they did it for their kids. And those of us who choose to stay, um, you know, we're not willing to give up this state to these extremists, these liars, these hypocrites, who are trying to not just scapegoat the LGBTQ community, they are here to sow racial discord, they are here to use stochastic violence to intimidate us out of the democratic process, and fundamentally they are here to dismantle democracy itself. Jim. Uh, I, I just wanted to uh, remind folks that Speaking of hypocrisy, the only reason why DeSantis is in there is because Roger Stone and his stooges uh, ran a, a sting on Andrew Gillum, um, you know, for for uh, you know per, very consensual um, <laughs> a situation that happened to have people there to document it. Um, you know the 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 hypocrisy starts from day one of this this guy being in office in the first place and um you know matt gates uh <laughs> still being there and now being talked about in a serious way as a potential presidential candidate etc is just mind-boggling and um so i i just wanted to 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 mention that mm -hmm. and say thank you for for everything that, that you're doing and for ho holding strong in an incredibly violent uh, uh situation down there so thank you well you know I, i'm glad you i'm glad you brought that up because 
you know, the calls for his resignation have come. Um, it took him, they took a, a bit longer than they should have, but um, Republican leadership in the state, I'll say specifically DeSantis, uh, Rick Scott, Marco Rubio has been silent. Donald Trump has been silent. And in fact, Christian Ziegler has resisted the call for him to uh, resign, citing the fact that Donald Trump, having having lost in court around sexual abuse charges, did not resign, did not, you know, and is still seeking the presidency. So that's the new role model. You know, there, there is no pretense any longer that this is, this emanates from some uh, values-based position. And to be perfectly clear, I wish I could go back to a time when I didn't know anything about their sex lives. Um, and it's not the fact that they apparently have an open relationship, apparently, you know, um, you know, bring women into their marriage. That's, that ought to be in the, in the realm of things that are none of our business, but they've made it our business, not just because of the, the criminal charges that revolve around this or the, the criminal allegations, I should say, but because they have literally attacked our families, calling our existence immoral, saying that any book that includes us talks about our families, uh, must be removed as pornography. All of these things that they have done uh, have caused real and lasting harm, structural, deep and structural damage to our uh, school system, uh, K through 12 and and at the university level. And so, and so because of that, regardless of where these uh, allegations go in terms of the courts, the hypocrisy, the lies that they have pumped into the system. And these, these here's, here's uh, Ron DeSantis on the debate stage saying that children are having body parts cut off. An absolute lie. Not a misstatement, not, you know, an absolute bald-faced lie that is intended, just as Moms for Liberty was intended, was from the beginning a scam, a fraud, cooked up by Christian Ziegler, Bridget Ziegler and pollsters for the purpose of luring suburban moms to the MAGA GOP by sowing racial fear, scapegoating LGBTQ families, and, and doing it in a manner that, that would reverse, would, would foreclose empathy for people yeah. who are different. Right. And so a lot of harm has been uh, inflicted. And the good news, the only good news in any of this is that it has been a huge wake up call. And I will tell you that the tide is turning here in Florida, wow. that when you go to school board meetings and we've, we've gone toe to toe with, with uh, Proud Boys and, and the uh, Moms for Liberty in school district after school district after school district. And it is parents with kids who are actually in those schools outnumbering the Moms for Liberty, pushing right. back even in their strongholds. They have not been able right. to push fully that agenda. There are school districts that have reinstated their their LGBTQ student guides, have reaffirmed their commitment to create a right. safe environment where all students are are protected and all families are respected. So we're going to keep pushing back, and most importantly, we're going to continue to expose to the, to the American people that what is being peddled, uh, make America Florida, yeah, the broken school system, corruption. Uh, in you know, right in the wide open, and and the kind of of cruel hypocrisy that is causing real harm to real people, while DeSantis utterly ignores the things that matter to Floridians, yes. skyrocketing insurance, yes. lack of you know access to to affordable housing, and climate change, all of these things that are having an impact right now. He's got no time for them because the only thing that matters to him is what Iowa Republican caucus voters think and what what might usurp Trump in the MAGA universe so we can get a few more do dollars, a few more you know moments in, in front of uh, that audience. So right. he's already, he's, it has also revealed the dereliction of duty. He's, he's really not our governor. He's simply got his rubber stamp legislature to eliminate resign to run so he could also steal from the public coffers 
to support his national campaign. That's right. That's right. And the cruel hypocrisy is exactly what it is. This is this these are this is culture wars over what really matters to uh, the most of the people in Florida. Um, one thing I just thought of as you were speaking is when we had an undercover mother who went undercover in Moms for Liberty on this show. What she really described was almost like cult dynamics, like these brainwashed people, because when they were challenged in school board meetings, they just folded. If people showed up who were actually real parents who really were concerned about the issues that they were uh, you know, pushing, they actually folded. So I think that that is something that's very interesting. People in Florida and people who deal with these Moms for Liberty, uh, essentially cult members, let's just call it what it is, uh, should know that when challenged, they readily fold. And let's just be very clear, because you stated this earlier, but I want our audience to know that the GOP chairman, Christian Ziegler, good, close, personal friend of Ron DeSantis, is under criminal investigation over allegations that he raped a woman. This was a woman who, according to her, was in a threesome with these, uh, with he and his wife, uh, who runs Moms for Liberty, and uh, again, where we started, this is not something that is shocking to our viewers, but it could be shocking to people who've sort of been seduced into this Moms for Liberty, I'm just going to call it a cult. Hi-Fi, jump in. So one of the things uh, I think about a lot when I see these, I mean, let's call Moms for Liberty what it is. It's an operation. It's an attack on the educational system. It's an attack on American values. But when I see these operations uh, carried out, I think a lot about who's paying for that. And one of the things I found was that Moms for Liberty uh, receives a lot, a lot, a lot of money from an organization called the Heritage Foundation. The Heritage Foundation is a Coke Foundation funded organization so you can see the line of money going into your state um right you and, said and, and, five, honestly, and notably the umbrella organization behind project 2025 so that too um but you said that there have been real life harms caused by moms for liberty people have been att attacked people have been harassed uh, would it not make sense for those people um, to file suit for intentional infliction of emotional distress? Uh, because Moms for Liberty is stalking them. They're harassing them. They're destroying their lives. They're intentionally trying to hurt these people. It seems to me that there should be some sort of fiduciary responsibility all the way up the chain of what's going on here. Thoughts? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I have a couple of thoughts. One, it's really important to note that it is a political operation. It is a cynical political operation, and it was literally cooked up in these think tanks. There's a New York Times article. I'm in it, but I'll draw your attention to a quote in it where the where the folks behind the Don't Say Gay Bill basically said gay marriage stopped being a wedge issue because the, the, the world shifted. Uh, the state, the, the country supports marriage across all sorts of divisions. They said, what can we use that would be a, a wedge issue? And, and they literally said, we threw everything against the wall. And what stuck was people don't know trans kids. They don't know families of trans kids. And that's where their point of attack came in that ignorance. And so, yes, what they have done to those families, I think is, it's definitely immoral. Is it criminal? Are, is, are there civil liabilities that ought to be inflicted as a consequence? Absolutely, but we have a fairly lawless governor. We have a governor who removes from office duly elected uh, public officials for no other reason than they are willing to stand up to his abuse of power. He's removed uh, superintendents, school board members, uh, state attorneys, all people elected by their constituents he has completely upended the democratic process. So, so when we say he's here to dismantle democracy, he's already doing it and he wants to do more. So that, that's part one. The, the other thing that I think is really important uh, you know, for people to, you know, to understand is that 
you know, this strategy, you always follow the money. Always, you, it will not be a surprise to discover that he keeps replacing qualified presidents with political cronies and tripling their pay. It shouldn't surprise people that that he appoints his, uh, you know, his uh, political goons to these boards where they get paid to be on those boards. And fundamentally, you know, we we are watching public education being dismantled so that there is a voucher system that allows people, you can be the richest person in the state of Florida and they will take public school money and give it to you uh, so that your kid can go to private school even though you have the means to do that yourself. And so it is It is a massive, you know, always follow the money. At the end of the day, that's who these people are. And in terms of funding it, um, you know, you're, you're right. It's important to remember that that Moms for Liberty not only has been designated a hate group, but they they quoted Hitler in their national newsletter. And I don't mean they used a quote from Hitler. They used a quote dash Adolf Hitler, right? They named who they knew who it was from. And then when they got called out on it, did they apologize and say that was a poor judgment on somebody's part? Absolutely, absolutely not. They defended the use of it and defended, quote, the wisdom of, of Adolf Hitler. Um, and of course, this is a governor who, who won't even bother to denounce neo-Nazis marching in the streets, who are not only carrying swastikas, but also carrying uh, signs in support of him uh, as a presidential candidate. So I, you know, I, I think it is important for people to, you know, just pay attention to how lucrative this scam is. Um, and who is benefiting from it. Um, but all of these traditional conservative values is an absolute smoke screen for a political operation that is aimed at dismantling our school system, undermining democracy, and doing it with the illusion of grassroots activism. And everywhere we confront them, they fold. They've had a number of leaders now resign because of their affiliations, their very direct affiliations with white supremacist groups. And now, of course, the Ziegler's at the center of, of the latest uh, controversy. Uh, I wanted to bring up uh, a fellow named Chris Rufo. Yes. You know, you know this guy? Uh, yes. His, speaking of education and destroying, you know, Florida's uh, sanity, uh, Chris Rufo is the guy who invented the, the um, panic about CRT. Which is yes. a legal, a graduate level legal course. <laughs> it has nothing to do with any of right. the shit that they were talking about. Right. All the, the the groomers and Disney, um, you know, attack on LGBTQ people. Um, all, those were literally invented by a guy who works at the Manhattan Institute, um, a senior fellow there. Speaking of Coke money. Uh, the Manhattan Institute has been funded by by Coke for decades, um, and all they do is racist, bigoted, psychological mm -hmm. operations, basically, starting with welfare queens for Reagan, you know, in the eighties. Yeah. So it's 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 fascinating that Chris Rufo uh, is 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 it that he's on he's not the head of new school right but he's like on the board or something yeah, he's on there i guess they call it the board of regents whatever the board. governing body is right which is just absolutely mind-blowing one of the most prolific and dangerous propagandists of the last you know half decade mm -hmm. um is is in a leadership position at an educational school that famously has been progressive and and you know at least to some extent liberal uh, so I just wanted to get your, you, you know, to see if you'd had any uh, exposure to this guy. Oh, absolutely. And of course, you know, I live right around the corner from Sarasota and, and the the students there and the parents there have really, the, I, I'm really impressed with how Sarasota has been standing up to these folks. Um, and I I think it has been, it has been eye-opening, you know, um, but what they've done you know, Rufo doesn't hide the ball at all. He says quite plainly he is here to bring his style of propaganda into the schools. He says very plainly 
that he that he his intention is to drive out academics and replace them with propagandists. And and he, he, you know, he says it quite plainly is a political operation. And he he actively and publicly recruits other people to that to that work. So so we we shouldn't act as though we're surprised at how it's unfolding. He was chosen not because he of ties to Sarasota or a particular, you know, respect for the academic um, caliber at that university, it was in, um, it was intended to drive out any any freedom of thought. You know, this has been from the very beginning an attack on not just the LGBTQ community. It has been an attack that was designed to um, disrupt all of our institutions, disrupt democracy by removing duly elected people disrupt any place, you know, they looked at the George Floyd, you know, the uprisings in the aftermath, and they said, where, where were, where was organizing happening? Oh, it was university students, but it was also in the suburbs. There were, you know, white moms going, hey, you know what, I watched that video, and there's something broken, fundamentally broken. Um, so they, you know, it was, it was some businesses saying, hey, you know what, we, we need to show up and we need to start having real conversations about race and racism and, and how we're going to move forward with, with multicultural work workforces. So they have strategically said, we're going to go after businesses and tell them, stay in your own lane. Don't get in the way of our agenda or we will publicly hurt you. So going after Disney was not just about going after Disney. It was about sending a message to all businesses. Very simple. You know, uh, going after the universities was intended to make students professors, faculty, terrified of even allowing any protests to emerge on their campuses. So they have systematically gone after every area where they where they think people who might speak up, might have the courage to speak up um, against their agenda. And they have, you know, done what fascists do. They've, they've made a big dis power display of inflicting maximum harm in the hopes that it will cause people to back off. But I will tell you that it's having the opposite effect we are outnumbering Moms for Liberty at school board meetings, uh, you know, three to one, four to one, 10 to one in some circumstances. And we are actual parents with kids in those school districts, not these astroturf with an occasional person who's been pulled into to their cult. But you can't stand up and say things like teachers are performing, you know, surgery on kids and be credible anymore because the parents who have kids and chaperone field trips and know the teachers are going, who are these lunatics, you know, and how did you turn the keys to our kids' education over to them? And I think yeah. one of the things that we've really done that's super important is they intended to wrap themselves in the this sort of blanket of I'm defending parents' rights as though it were Teflon and would protect them from any critique. Well, actual parents are standing up and not allowing them to, to, to say those things incredibly. What they're doing is censorship. What they're doing is surveillance. You know, the the straight A student, student body president, athlete that, that's been driven out of school at Monarch was informed on. Somebody, you know, called and, and um, that's the America. That's the sort of surveillance state where your neighbors are peeping at you through the, you know, through the blinds. Uh, re ready to drop a dime if you're not acting, saying, doing, or thinking what has been approved. They even described libraries not as places, uh, you know, not as uh, protected places of First Amendment right and, you know, a marketplace of ideas, but as um, places that function to spread the government's ideology. Wow. Oh my gosh. I have one more question, but Hi Fi, do you want to jump in? I, I just, I don't have a question. I just need to make a statement. What you said, Nadine, is Maoist China. What you just said is Stalinist Russia. Right. That is not America. So I don't know who, who the hell is feeding these people information, but oh my God, are they wrong? I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Thanks, Hi-Fi. This was a brilliant interview. I'm really excited that you joined us today. I'm looking so forward to our global audience getting to hear uh, from ground zero, from the front lines here in Florida, what's actually going on. Um, 
I can tell you from where I am in uh, sunny blue California, we don't like Ron DeSantis. Uh, I, I don't, I'm speaking for, of course, the progressive contingency. We don't like his Stepford wife or whatever she is. We don't like him. I, I, I feel like the nation is looking at him like, what the fuck? Um, what but I the want poop to map, the poop map changed everything, Heidi. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> the poop map. Oh yes. yes. <laughs> Do you remember? Yes. Uh, speaking of California and DeSantis, yes. Yes. Uh, they had a they had a debate, and uh, Ron DeSantis uh, tried to troll our, <laughs> the, yeah. our governor with a poop map of San Francisco, and, uh-huh. and, and yeah. Newsom was just like. Are you are aren't you embarrassed by yourself right now? Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. Newsom yeah. is a great political operative. He's 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 good at what he does. Well, you know, um, I will, I do want to say this about that. One of the things we said was we wanted America to actually see what's happening in Florida. Yes. And, and behind yes. all of these sort of uh, right wing think tank tested messages are real people. Yeah. And so while he was holding up these cardboard, you know, uh, uh, free free Florida and, you know, make America Florida signs. We were showing the rubble and the smoke coming up from everything he touches here. So it's yeah. not surprising to me to see his his um, poll numbers cratering uh, nationwide. The more people see him, the, the further he sinks into the poll. He's, uh, I think he's underwater here in Florida as well uh, because people see what a cynical, uh, you know, some I said to somebody, wow, we've got two narcissists running for president out of Florida. And they said, no, Trump's the narcissist, uh, but DeSantis is a sociopath. Oh, thought, yeah. oh, oh. okay. Well, um, I can't argue with you, but if you the know, boots fit, it's, you know, well, <laughs> if the heels fit. but I mean, I think the more people see him, the more people he- hear him, the less, regardless of, you know, where they are, the less they they like him, and and I think all of the the hype about him being a more disciplined Trump without the legal baggage um, has fallen away, and people just see him as a you know a naked opportunist, uh, willing to hurt people to get where he what he wants, and um, and they don't like what they see. So so we're going to continue to ring the ring that bell, and I hope that people see how serious the situation is. But the biggest thing I hope they take away from this is. We are turning the tide in Florida. He is cratering in the polls, and it is a repudiation, not just of his weird smile and his awkward gestures and his kitten heels or whatever whatever those new stories are. It is a rejection and a repudiation of the laws, the policies, and the rhetoric that he has been spewing all over the country. And I think that's really important for people to understand that the more we tell the truth, the more they shrink from the light. And Beautiful. And we have to understand that this backlash comes episodically in in American life. You know, it's like the movie uh, It It by Stephen King. You know, the the evil clown in the sewer is sort of the collective uh, <laughs> hatefulness and ugliness that sort of resurfaces every fifty years. And we have to we have to come together and not let them divide us, not let them pit us against each other, not allow them to turn people into scapegoats. And not only do we have to stop them and stop this backlash, but we actually have to have a vision of the future where everybody can see themselves, their kids and their grandkids in that future. Yeah. And that is not the future that they see for themselves. They see a democracy dismantled. They see power concentrated in the smallest hands. They see cash grabs and corruption uh, with no guide rails. You know, DeSantis knows he's passing laws and signing laws that are unconstitutional. He's just doing the math about whether or not the Supreme Court that he has stacked will do anything about it. He's removing people from office knowing he doesn't have the legal authority and right to do so. But just like the federal judge says, DeSantis was wrong when he removed Andrew Warren from office. He was outside of his bounds, but that federal judge had no ability to reinstate him. So he doesn't care about what's legal you know, he has his wife, you know, his wife was on television giving away the game, which was flood Iowa. Doesn't matter if you're from Iowa, come and stuff the ballot box for us. That is who he is fundamentally. The same guy who has his own, you know, election police that was created for the purpose of intimidating returning citizens, people who paid their debt to society and can vote and ought to be allowed to vote. He made a huge um 
spectacle of arresting and humiliating people who thought they could vote, went to the state, did everything they were told to do, and then he went through the process of humiliating them, having them arrested. None of those people, you know, none of those charges are sticking to the folks that he publicly humiliated. But you know the charges where they are sticking? Uh, Republican operatives who who are caught voting multiple times. So wow. it is it is a it is a scary time, but people are standing up, people are pushing back. Even companies who kind of maybe hit under the desk because they watch what happened to, to Disney are kind of going, you know what? We we can't have our best and brightest leaving the state. We can't function on a global field if we're allowing him to say we can't even train our employees on how to get to how to get along in the workplace when they come from different cultures, different backgrounds, et cetera. They're, they want to handcuff us in so many ways. And they're starting to push back. And I think it, it's a good thing. And the, I think the more he continues to decline in the polls, the more we'll see uh, people recover their their backbone. And I've told people, you know, he might get a dead cat bounce in Iowa. He may, you know, stuff enough ballots to, uh, to, to have a good showing. Um, and so we aren't going to relent. We're not going to let up the pressure. When his campaign began, there were people saying, oh, he's unstoppable. He's a juggernaut. Uh, Trump is wounded. He's the successor. And we said, not so fast. When people see what he's doing, we think that's going to change. And now our message is, don't count him completely out. Keep the pressure on. Keep exposing what he's doing. Uh, because who knows what's going to happen in the court with Trump? Who knows what's what's going to happen with any of these uh, characters who are simply performing a script, doing their best to secure the most extreme people, you know, is is this who uh, Nikki Haley is? She's going to be whoever she needs to be. Yeah, and all of them are. There's no Clearly. center. There's no core there except blind ambition. Wow, Nadine, you come on this show, and we were always reminded of how brilliant you are. Oh my gosh! And we are so grateful that Florida has you in this fight, um, and that you are basically the front lines here fighting this good fight. One last question. Our audience is global. The news cycle is continually flooded. How do we take this moment, this, this true scandal revealing this cruel hypocrisy and make it work for democracy? You know, I think call them out, keep calling them out. Um, you know, support the, the work at the front line. You know, Florida is not an outlier. It is a harbinger. This is the lab where they're cooking up every single thing they can think of. But believe me, California, there, there are school districts in California where the same laws, where they're taking the life and times of Rosa Parks and, you know, and, and chanting CRT to take black authors and people of color authors out of the schools at the same time that they're erasing the existence of LGBTQ people. Those same people are taking this state by state county by county, school district by school district. So be vigilant where you are. But at the end of the day, you've got to call it out. I spoke at Howard University just a couple of weeks ago. And one of the last, after after the speaking, they did questions. And one of the last speakers was a white guy from uh, West Palm Beach. And he stood up and he said, if five years ago you had told me that I would be at Howard University at a symposium put together by the author of 1619 um, and that I would be standing here um, trying to find a way to make amends, I would have laughed until I hurt myself. He said, I was not just a, a Trump DeSantis supporter. I was full MAGA. And the reason that he stood up was somebody said, what do you do with the people who, you know, who are sort of wrapped up in the cultish ideology of MAGA? And I was saying, you know, you got to leave the door open. You've got to leave the door open and you've got to continue to engage and don't think that people are stupid, understand that they're fearful and that everything that they're being told is reinforcing that fear, but they're going to come to crossroads again and again. And he said, that's exactly what happened for me. The first time I minimized it, even though I was uncomfortable, I kept going. The next time he said, I couldn't minimize it, but then I said, well, on balance, even though I don't agree with this on balance, I think more good is coming from me being part of this than not. And then finally he got to a place where he said, this whole thing is a lie and I feel foolish. And he said, there are a lot of people who are leaving, but they don't do so publicly. One, because they get trolled, attacked, stalked, hounded. 
and they've severed their ties with their previous world and their whole world revolves around MAGA now. And so for them to step away is to say, I'm about to, I'm going to be in isolation. I'm going to be cut off from every source of support. And so he's actually looking to, to launch a, an organization called Leaving MAGA, uh, something like that, because he said there's a bunch of people who have just quietly faded out, who where the, you know, they've, they have, uh, the mask has slipped. And I think the Ziegler's uh, sex scandal and the, and the, um, you know, rape allegations are, are creating that moment for a lot of people who said these folks are not who they said they are. Their purposes were not the purposes they said they were. And how else have they lied to me? So I think it's, I think this is a moment where a lot of people are going to, going to reach that point where they, they finally say, you know what? we better figure out how we make amends and start building something that, that we all have a stake in. Thank you. Nadine Smith, thank you so much. Every time I think Radpod's done their best interview, we do another interview like this and we thank you so much. I cannot wait to get this out to our uh, viewers. This is so important. Well, thank you. And thanks for amplifying uh, the message. And for folks who are in Florida that are hearing this, equalityflorida.org. Come join us. And even if you're not in Florida and you want to help, we can. You, you, there's a place for you, no matter where you are, to be a part of this movement. This is the front line of a national fight that DeSantis would like to make a global fight. And uh, we know the same actors, the same think tanks, the same, you know, Nigel Farage's and Steve Bannon's and, you know, all of those folks are, are the same folks behind Brexit. We're behind Trump. It uh, is all connected. And we got to start standing up together. So thank you for amplifying our voices.